Quinty and welcome to my dining room table. So today I'm working a problem and this one is a gas law problem uh, with a scuba diver taking a balloon. So I'll read the problem to you and then we'll jump into it. So if a scuba diver takes a balloon filled with 1.6 liters of nitrogen at the surface where the temperature is 34.1 degrees Celsius and the air pressure is 70, 752 torr to a depth where the temperature is 18.3 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 1.59 atmospheres, what is the volume of the balloon at depth? At that depth, yeah. Okay, so a couple things. One, when I'm saying the nitrogen here, as long as we're going to assume ideal gas, which we probably are, I don't care. It's just gas. Um, so obviously this is going to look like a combined gas flow equation, uh, but we're going to probably chuck some stuff out. So I have P1, V1 equals N1, T1. Now I know a lot of folks don't put the N1 there. I find it's helpful, especially transitioning to ideal gas law, but this is going to be combined gas law. So P2, V2 over T2. By the way, whenever you're solving for these guys, be uber careful if you happen to be solving for the uh, temperature or the moles. There's the moles. Uh, because they're the denominator, it's very easy to accidentally solve for the reciprocal and not actually the thing you want. So be forewarned. Okay, um, now a couple of things. One, there's no implication that this leaked, so I'm going to get rid of the moles. I'm going to assume they're the same. So whatever this is, I'm assuming they're the same and therefore they cancel. Okay, next thing. Um, this is going to be my question mark. So that one is going to be my unknown. That's what I'm solving for. Now, my temperatures. My temperatures are in degrees Celsius. This is going to be a problem. So, because I have to use an absolute scale. I have to use Kelvin. I could use ranking, no one does. So I have to use Kelvin. So the way I do that is I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to take this 18.3 and I'm going to add that to 273.15 Kelvin. This is going to be my answer in Kelvin, which let's just do it. That's going to give me 291.45 Kelvin. Yes, I realize not all of those are significant. That 5 is not significant. The 4 is because that lined up. The 2 is because we're adding. This isn't weakest link rules. This is addition. So this is places past decimal point. So one place, two places, it's one. So that's actually the good number. But I'm not going to round because I'm not done yet. Okay. Uh, let's go for the next one, which would be uh, 273.15 plus um, 34.1 gives me 307.25 Kelvin. Okay. Now, next thing I have is notice that my pressures, my atmosphere's here and my tor's there. They don't match. I can use any unit of pressure I want, but they have to match. So what I'm going to do is I want to convert one into the other. It literally does not matter which one. I'm just going to switch this guy over to atmospheres. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take that 252 tor. I'm going to divide that by 760 tor. Let me set this up proper. I'm going to take the 752 tor, and obviously if this was millimeters of mercury, it'd be the same thing. I'm going to draw my fraction bar. I'll do 760 tor per one ATM. And then now I take my 752 divided by my 760, and boom, I get 0 0.98947 ATM. Once again, those are not all significant. That's three fig figs. This one's actually a definition, so it's exact. Therefore, that's my good number. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to recreate it, but now with actual numbers that I know. So this is going to be 0 0.98947 ATM times 1.6 liters divided by 273.15 Kelvin 
equals 1.59 ATM times I don't know what divided by 307.25 Kelvin. Okay, so now it's just algebra. So I'll go ahead, I'll times both sides by 307.25K, at which point the Kelvin's canceled there, that whole bottom part cancels there. Um, and then I'm just gonna do this, and then I'll come back, I'm just gonna do this in two steps, just to make my life easier. So I'm gonna take 0.98947 times 1.6, uh, times 307.25 divided by 273. Why did I put that there? That is not the right number at all. Um, I'm looking for 291.45. Okay. Uh, easiest mistake to make is simply putting in the wrong number. Seriously, easiest mistake to make. This is one of the reasons why whenever you're doing these uh, show work, um, if if this is being hand graded, if it's not, it's being machine graded, there's nothing I can do. But if I'm hand grading it and I see where you clearly indicated that your temperature in Kelvin was this and I put the wrong number in there, I'm going to take off a very small amount of points. Um, but only if I can clearly indicate that that's what happened. Okay, so in this case, I get from that whole mess, this side is going to be 1.6689. Uh, units that are left over, that would be ATM liters. And that's going to equal 1.59 ATM times, I don't know what, liters. Uh, so I will divide both sides by 1.59 ATM. That all goes away there. The ATMs go away, but not the numbers. And so now I take that number divided by 1.59 and boom, I get 1.04967 liters equals question mark. That looks good. Let's talk sig figs. I have three sig figs there, three there, uh, more than three there, so it's three. So it's gonna go there. So this now is going to give me 1.05 liters equals, and that question mark is really V2. Okay, so the final volume is smidgen over a liter. Okay, fairly straightforward. The tricky part of this was once again, just make sure you get the right numbers plugged in. That's half the battle. Um, once again, whenever you're dealing with combined gas lock, just cancel out whatever you're not using, uh, as long as you can reasonably assume that it's not changing. If you believe it's changing and you don't have values for it, you're just up a creek. Uh, the other one is, if you are solving for anything in the denominator for any question, beware. Uh, reciprocals can come out and bite you. Uh, so with that said, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in later videos.